<clears throat> this video is about the magnetic fields produced by currents. We saw in our previous lesson that current carrying wires experience forces when they're in a magnetic field. But the weird thing that happens is currents themselves can also create a magnetic field. So um, current carrying wires are affected by magnetic fields and they also create their own magnetic field. That's something that I'm just gonna start this video out with. I'm just gonna write down that idea because it's an important fact to memorize, important thing to understand in order to solve the problems that follow. Magnetic fields exert force on current carrying wires. That is the thesis of lesson 7.3. That's what we learned before, that magnetic fields exert forces on current carrying wires. But this takes a little further. I'm going to go on to say that. Um, but those same wires also produce a magnetic field of their own. but those same wires also produce a magnetic field of their own. That's the core concept in this lesson. It goes along with an equation that tells us the magnitude of that magnetic field. So the magnetic field B produced in a, by a current carrying wire is given by mu naught mu with a zero as a subscript times i, the current, divided by two pi r. Lots to label here. B equals mu naught i divided by two pi r. So B is the magnetic field as we know. Mu naught is a special value called the permeability of free space. The permeability of free space is just a universal constant. It's not something we're going to go into. But actually, we did go over this in a recent lesson. This is the um, it's almost like it's like the ability of a certain medium to be magnetized. So uh, a, a vacuum is an area with no air, no anything in it. It's open space. Here they're calling it free space. So it's the ability of open space to become magnetic, the ability for a magnetic field to be in that space. Um, each substance in the world has a different value. So for example, water would have its own value and we can figure out the magnetic field in water. Um, neon gas has its own value, and so we could figure out the magnetic field with, within a neon gas, but this is just the value for um, empty space, a vacuum. We, I gave you a different value before, I believe, but this is another interesting way to write it. Uh, it's 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th. I believe I gave out the different value without the pi, so... 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th, another way to write it. 
R is the radial distance from the wire. Of course, that's in meters. This would be the value that you figure out like, okay, so there's a, there's a current running through. Like if you wanna figure out the magnetic field produced by a certain current, you would have to do that at a certain location. So maybe you're trying to figure out the magnetic field two feet away or 0.6 meters away. Maybe you're trying to figure out the magnetic field 0 0.1 meters away from the actual wire. So that's what that's all about. How far away is the, is the current from the charge that's being acted on? And I is the current. So the more current you have passing through your wire, the stronger the magnetic field is going to be, and therefore the more force it will be able to exert on other things. So that's the equation. That's how you figure out the magnetic field produced by a wire. Pretty simple. It gets a little complicated when you start talking about directions, but it's just another right-hand rule. So earlier we learned one type of right-hand rule, and in my opinion, this one's pretty similar. This is the second right-hand rule. It's a special version of the right-hand rule that applies to wires. Here's how you apply it, the second right-hand rule. Point the thumb. Point the thumb in the direction of the current I and curl the fingers to point in the direction of the magnetic field B. Point the thumb in the direction of the current I and curl the fingers to point in the direction of the magnetic field B. Now I'm not a great artist, especially for something like this. Um, in 3D, I have trouble drawing parts of the human body, especially in 3D like this, but here's a demonstration of what the right hand rule is. Go ahead and see if you can copy this image to the best of your ability. I'm gonna do that as well, um, but I'm gonna leave it on the screen because you might wanna use your own noggin to draw it. It's, it's, uh, it's not my strong suit. I'm doing my best here though. See, I've already messed up. You should draw the hand first. You should draw the hand first uh, and then draw the wire. So I'm starting over. I'm gonna draw the hand. Okay, I'm gonna go with the thumb. Oh boy, this is, this is bad news bears. Trust me, people, you don't wanna see what I'm doing here. It's not the best. Okay, I'll go like that. Goes behind the wire. Yeah, maybe don't draw the hand first. I don't even know. Woof. Pretty bad. Eh. Using multiple colors might help. So I like this rule because they show I think the fingers, again, are a good representation of the magnetic field itself. And the thumb, it, previously the thumb represented velocity, and now it represents the direction of current, and I think that's a good way to represent it. So here's my, this is my best attempt, guys. Um, but basically, the, the current that goes through the wire, as the current goes through the wire like this, 
it's going to create a current that wraps around, wraps around like this. So if this is my wire, the current's going that way. Um, it's going to produce a magnetic field that goes like this. The magnetic field is very strong nearby here. The magnetic field is weaker on the outside, but it is being produced uh, infinitely, infinitely out. Just gets very weak to the point where you don't even notice it. So second right-hand rule, basically, yeah, creates a magnetic field around the wire, looping around the wire. We'll see an example here. I think it's pretty straight up. Pretty simple. And maybe, well, probably one more with no math in it, conceptual example. Okay. Here we go. A very long wire produces a current of three amps while a 6.5 times 10 to the negative sixth Coulomb charge passes by at a distance of 0 0.050 meters and a velocity of 280 meters per second parallel to the wire. I'll pause there for a moment. A very long wire produces a current of 3.0 amps while a 6.50 times 10 to the negative sixth Coulomb charge passes by at a distance of 0 0.050 meters and a velocity of 280 meters per second parallel to the wire. So this means that the uh, charge is moving parallel to the wire. It's moving in the same direction. Question is, calculate FB. So we don't have an equation for FB from this lesson, but we do have an older one. Um, there's two equations for FB that we learned. One of them involves current. One involves moving charges. The reason we're going to use the moving charges here is because we're trying to calculate the force acting on that charge. The version of this equation that has current in it is used to figure out the force acting on a wire, but that's not what we're doing here. We're trying to find the force acting on a charge. I'll give it a draw in a moment, but here's the other equation. Of course, this is the one from today. B equals mu naught I over 2 pi R. So we're going to combine these together. Um, we're going to plug in B for B and figure out FB that way. Hey, while I'm here, I'm just going to write that out. I will need to draw it for context, though. QV times mu naught I over 2 pi R times sine of Okay. Once again, I kind of find it necessary to show you the picture I'm going off of here. So this is the picture of the situation. We've got a current moving vertically there. 
we want to find the force acting on this charge that's moving parallel to the current. So we can see right now that um, the right-hand rule is being applied here. It, picture your fingers curling around this while your thumb points up. That's how we know that the magnetic field pushes this way. You can curl your fingers all around the point that way. And because of that, and then if you apply the right-hand rule again, to the charge here, your thumb points in the direction of that velocity and the force of the palm points in here. So don't stress too much about the directions. Let's focus more on the math. I'm gonna give this a quick draw anyway. Again, just do your best on the drawing. I think this little plane here that they're giving us is to show us uh, that it's moving in a plane, it's to show us uh, it's to give us better context for the circle. So that's the direction of the magnetic field. The charge is here. The charge is moving this way in the same direction of the current. And the magnetic field points this way. So all you really need to get from this drawing is that theta here is 90 degrees. Velocity is that way. B is that way, so there's our 90 degree angle. It's like a weird uh, context, a weird uh, perspective. Okay, we're still rolling. I'm going to plug in the numbers. We'll pluck them from here based on units. So Q is charge, it's measured in coulombs. So we can see there that's our charge 6.5 times 10 to the negative 6. What else? V is velocity, and we can see meters per second right there, so that's 280. Mu naught is the new value from today. If you flip back in your notes, you'll find 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. The current I is, uh, is measured in amps, and we can see that right there, amps, 3.0. And the denominator will have 2 times pi times r is our radial distance. You can see here a distance of 0 0.05. And like I said, the angle is 90. If you punch that into your calculator, you'll get an answer of 2.2 times 10 to the negative 18, uh, just 8. There it is, 2.2 times 10 to the negative eighth. And so what this will do is it'll pull the charge toward the wire. We're going to end these notes with a conceptual problem that just depends on direction. We're only really asking about direction on this last problem. It takes about a third of a page, so make sure you've got a third of the page. Okay, and here's the example. In the scenarios below, will the wires attract or repel? In the scenarios below, will the wires attract or repel? Two different scenarios. Might have the same answer, might have different answers, but here's what they are. In both, we have parallel wires
So very long parallel wires. And this is wire number one, wire number two. So they each experience a current. This has a current I1 moving directly upward. You don't need two colors if you don't have them. This is I2, but it's moving down. Right here we'll have I1, it's still moving upwards. But the difference in this scenario, number two, scenario, I guess scenario B, you could call it, is that the wires are moving in the same direction. The uh, currents are moving in the same direction. So the question is, if uh, currents are moving in opposite directions in parallel wires, will they attract or repel? If currents are moving in the same direction in parallel wires, will they attract or repel? In order to answer this question, we need to apply both right-hand rules. First, we're going to apply right-hand rule number two, and that says uh, curl your fingers and point your thumb to figure out what direction the magnetic field is. So I want to figure out over here what direction is the magnetic field created by wire number one. I'll point my thumb along I1, curl my fingers, and I can see that if I curled my fingers over towards, I might have turned my page here, point my thumb along I1, curl my fingers, and I find that my, in order to get my fingers over to I2, I have to face them down into the paper. So we have a magnetic field pressing into the page. So that magnetic field caused by one is going into the page. So we have a magnetic field going in there. What about the magnetic field created by I2? I'll do the same thing. I'll point my thumb along the current of I2, and I'll see if I can get my fingers over toward I1. I'm actually going to go, I'm going to start like this. Put my, put my thumb along it, and in order to touch I1, I have to go like this. Again, into the page. So that's right-hand rule number two. Right-hand rule number two helps us figure out what direction the magnetic field is. Now, based on that magnetic field, I've got to figure out where's my palm going to point? Where's my palm going to point to determine the force? So here's right-hand rule number one. You might have to look it up. You might have to look up right-hand rule number one in your notes to understand where this is coming from. I'll point my fingers along B, point my thumb along I1, and it looks like my palm points this way. The palm represents force. Same thing here. Point my fingers along B, point my thumb along I2, and my palm is pointing outwards. So in this case, they're going to repel. The opposite is going to be true for scenario two. I'll breeze through it for the sake of time. They're going to attract on this one. And I'll show why. Once again, read right hand rule number two to understand this step. I'm going to figure out what direction the magnetic field is over here. The, the magnetic field acting on I2 caused by I1 Put my fingers here. Looks like they're going to go into the page. Magnetic field created by I2. I'll point my finger along it, and I can see that my fingers are curling up over here. This 
So the magnetic field over here is pointing out of the page. These two fields will create forces inward. Because of right hand rule number one, I point my fingers into the page here, point my fingers into the page, point my thumb along I, the force is coming out of my palm. Over here, point my fingers along B, it's coming out of the page. Point my thumb along I, which is pointing up, and my palm is pointing that way. So that means the force would be acting that way on the wire. So, right hand rule is pretty weird. I would say focus on the math if you're not sure about the right hand rule. As long as you have the units memorized, you're golden. If you know that Q is charge and it's measured in coulombs, you're good. If you know that V is speed, measured in meters per second, you're good, and so on and so forth. If you have questions, let me know. If you're all set, post your stuff on Google Classroom. Thanks for sticking with me. I'll see you all soon.